Okay. There we go. Right. And um, I will just, okay. um, let's see, I will just open up the document. Uh, okay. I'll put the document in the chat now. Um, and the internet connection does seem to be quite good today. So I think you're right about Zoom being much better. Um, so uh, I'll just put in the interview prompts as well. Um, there we go. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, so we're recording and the idea now is that we'll just run through these questions for the interview and um, and we'll do a, so this is still just a preparation meeting. It's not the final interview, um, but we will run through it today and then hopefully do the proper recorded interview with Bethany as well. Um, next week or the week after um so this is just practice no pressure um but yeah so we'll get started so can you tell us who you are and what your project is about please okay um um that's a very good question um i'm lawrence obo wine um, I'm from Enugu states of Nigeria. Okay. Um, a town called Mbu. Mbu is an issue of local government of Enugu states, Nigeria. Um, I'm a philosopher by training. Uh, I'm a Christian by religion. Uh, my speciality in philosophy is African philosophy and thought. That's where I took my PhD. But I've also taught widely modern philosophy, Western philosophy. I'm at, I'm at home with all the major thinkers there and also Oriental Eastern philosophy. But I'm also hugely dedicated and interested in environmental philosophy, environmental ethics environmental humanities and so um this has occupied my time for some years now okay and um in thinking of environmental philosophy i've been attracted to the environmental ethics of the Igbo world i am an Igbo by ethnicity by language i speak Igbo very well that's where i grew up but i also speak english as you can see so i've been able to get interested and connected with the Igbo philosophy of environment, Igbo ethics of environment. And this is because this um, um, notion of environment it places the earth at the centrality of everything, the earth. The earth is seen as a force, as a principle and that generates norms, values. Okay, and our engagement with life in the Igbo world is defined by the earth. So the earth is um, symbolized by an arch deity called Allah. Okay. And uh, Allah is the wife of the sun god called Anyaun. But Allah is more powerful than Anyaun in Igbo thinking. Okay. And um, Side by side with Allah, you have other deities, Mbari, Ifejoko. Okay, but the interesting thing about Allah is that from Allah has emanated Igbo politics, Igbo social ethics, Igbo moral ethics. So beyond religion, it has metamorphosed to something bigger. And by the way, in Igbo thinking, religion is not supernaturalistic. Religion is naturalistic. They both don't worship God for the sake of the God. They worship the God for the sake of themselves. So the gods come into union with the Igbos and some of, major other, many other African religions. OK, 
Okay, so this is part of why I, I've gotten interested in Allah. Fantastic. Uh, uh, um, maybe, maybe you could also tell us a little bit. Okay. That, oh, sorry. The, I think it's frozen. I have to go to this. Sorry, it froze. Um, but maybe could you tell us a bit about the or the uh, the the question of oil as well in relation to Igbo community? Yeah, I'm co I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. yes, I'm getting close to that. Okay. So, so these are all what have metamorphosed to my interest in the oil energy ethics of the Igbo world, because side by side with Allah is Igbo communalism. So I've gotten interest to, to see interested in seeing how much is the Igbo world being affected positively or negatively by the presence of oil and energy in their midst. And this is what has led to this research that I'm doing, which is hugely on how Igbo communitarianism, Igbo Allah ethics have been affected positively or negatively by the presence of oil presence of energy, the presence of um, environmental um, resources in their world. And uh, I have been able to, I'm interested in this because hugely people know more about Niger Delta in Nigeria. They don't know about non-Niger Delta areas that are producing oil. So this is what spurred my interest in this. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's, yeah, really fascinating and really um concise as well which is good for the interview um so second question what does energy justice look like in this community this place and in your project okay fine um i translated energy justice mm -hmm. to environmental justice an aspect of environmental justice which i have also been working on all this while I have a lot of articles on it. So I looked at it from, uh, uh, even if environmental energy justice doesn't capture the entirety of environmental justice, it's a crucial aspect of it. And then I, I did that by downloading the principles of environmental justice here. Okay, because once I wanted to know more about energy justice, I was referred to this. So I interpret your question to be, how much of justice has been advanced by the presence of oil, energy, and gas. Uh, interestingly, where I have been doing my research is a gas zone in the Igbo world. It's a famous gas zone. And I'll be very happy to uh, invite and take anyone who wants to validate my claims to be there and see for him or herself. Okay. So, now my discovery here is that going by my reading or my own understanding of energy justice as sharing the gains and pains of energy equally i would say that what i have observed is what i can categorically call energy injustice energy injustice uh, i have seen things for myself and um, i have first hand okay uh, information that can 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 validate this claim for instance, in my research trip, immediately we entered where this gas is functioning or being produced. My recruited research assistant started complaining that the skin was scratching him. Okay, immediately we entered that zone. I was feeling some itches in the, on the skin. And during my engagement with the community, I saw the villagers complaining of such. But this is a clear illustration which we can invite anybody to see for him or herself. Now, why would this kind of thing happen? And even if it happens, what are the measures that has been put in place to take care of this? Okay, that was the question I was asking. I wanted to know because we also need energy. We also need this oil. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's plausible. But then, how is it being balanced up, okay, with the other effect of it, which I believe should make us human. Uh, we must place our humanity um, at a stronger level than the materials that we are getting to support life, okay.
okay, which I believe oh, this is what this energy project yeah, is all about. So uh, I asked a lot of questions. Why is it this way? What has happened? Okay, and <clears throat> the answers were many. One is that the energy industries do not reckon with the community in terms of Igbo communal ethics. That is having dialogue with them one-on-one, -on -one, seeing themselves as a part of the community, okay, which I believe is very, very important and significant. Energy engagement with any community. I should be able to, one, locate the traditions of Scotland, locate the cultures of Scotland, and, hello. Your video is frozen, but I can still hear you. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay, <laughs> fine. So, fine. So, I should be able to engage with the people I'm going to visit. Okay, that also shows the quality of my own humanity. So, these are not observed. So, their claim is that some of these energy industrialists, for example, get into these communities without this kind of negotiation, this kind of discussion. So they do not even know who to lay this um, uh, complaint to, to voice out their complaint to. So I think as a researcher, I almost turned out to be, I, I don't know what to call it, but they were expecting much from me, you know, and I, I'm going to discuss that again, you know. So I think there's a lacuna somewhere. Now, this lacuna cannot be unilaterally also heaped on the energy industrialists. Okay, why? Because some of the elites of these communities also are believed to be conniving with these industrialists to alienate a suction of those whose voice are very, very important, okay, which is wrong. So there's a kind of collective forces leading to this kind of injustice. And uh, I was also open enough to also let them see the different dimensions of interpreting what is happening. So, uh, so I, basically, there is gain from one side and pain on the other side, which I discovered in the course of my research. Great, thank you. I mean, yeah, it sounds it sounds um, very difficult to navigate those different um, positions in relation to the industry and the community. So. Um, could you share a story about a particular challenge maybe that you faced when making this work with the community? And it, it would be great if you could talk maybe a little bit about the about the community, you know, that, yeah, that kind of per interpersonal work that you've been doing with the community as well. And, and if there have been any difficulties in that process. Okay, I, I, thank you very much. I think um, I would say I've been lucky to walk to the community through a respected member of the community, a good mobilizer of the community. So it's, it has been very helpful. Um, uh, so in terms of getting into the community, uh, I wouldn't say I had a challenge. Okay, but then in the course of the work, what I will call research challenges started emerging. And the first was the expectation of the research. The question was, people have been coming here to carry out studies, but we have not had any visible impact of these studies, the environment. So uh, I'm supposed to engage about four, there's a community with so four sub uh, communities kind of. So I've engaged two and the data I'm collecting um, uh, shows that I think I can now illustrate certain issues that uh, can, can be heard. So the question was, 
um, when I went to I went to Obile community, I went to Asa community, uh, com sub communities, okay, because the entire community is Egbema, So this they raised the question that we have been suffering. We don't have the impact of what this oil that has that is is is, is uh, being generated in our community. We've had one or two people that came here and they come, and at the end of the day, we don't see the result. So the question was one: Are you here for advocacy, or are you here for academic research, or both of them? Okay, that is what they wanted made clear. Okay, what influence do you have with the government? so that we can believe that the views we generate can lead to something better that can enhance our lives. Okay, they enumerated a whole lot of things they would have expected from the oil industries in their community. So I had to present myself as a medium. Can I go on? Yes, yes, can you carry on. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. Are you hearing me? Yes, yeah, hearing you. It's all it's Very good. fantastic. I had to present myself as a medium. Good. As one who is transferring knowledge from them to the government, to the oil communities, to the oil um, industrialists, and who could promote their voice by doing a good research finding. Okay, so... Uh, I don't have governmental capacity, but I have knowledge capacity. And that is what has brought me. And there we are very happy with that because they know that before now, nobody has taken up that challenge, even to tell people the situation. So I had to uh, let them know that the knowledge you can generate can lead to a lot of goods. People can be interested in this. I also had to convince them that those who initiated these projects may also have come from the nationalities, the geographical nationalities of those who own the oil companies around. And so for them to have generated it shows that they're also interested on how much the oil is leading to a more positive vision of human community anywhere. So they should see it from that perspective. Because it's always sometimes easy to flatten this and say, look, oh, everybody from one part of the world is against us. I said, no. The fact that they can fund this and they want to hear from us is also a sign. We should also, you know, be, 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 be positive that this is a sign that people are also interested in our lives here. So from that point of view, we became friends and they had become happier. And then we had a very elaborate discussion elaborate engagement, took some things and made them happy as much as we could with the little support and all that. And they volunteered very significant uh, views. We had two patterns. One is that interaction where I asked a lot of questions and recorded it. Okay, I have it, a lot of tapes that emanated from the encounter. Yes, yes. Then we had this... Um, 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 interviews. We had these uh, questionnaires we distributed. So some elites also volunteered. Okay, not all of them we are literate. Some who are literate volunteered. Okay, and we have them. I'm working on them. Then we also had slight in-depth interviews with some elders there who were able to tell us the origin of the presence of oil. Okay. Yes, in their communities, how it all started. And it was quite very, very um, um, elaborate and satisfying. I was satisfied after the attempt, after the effort. <laughs> and there are many more we're going to do there because I told them, we walk, we come back, we walk, we come back, we generate more data. I, you know, that is how it's going to, so that the best of that encounter will emerge. So, um, and uh, I do hope that uh, the PEN group will also facilitate the publication of these findings 
in very visible spaces, which for me is what will satisfy my own effort and also satisfy the community that they were able to present themselves to volunteer the views. Yeah, fantastic. And and hopefully they will be interested in this film that we're making as well. You'll be able to share with them the film. And uh, yes, I'm I'm so glad to hear that you recorded the interviews because we'll be able to in, if if you can send us some of those videos, we'll be able to include them as part of the film, and that would be really fantastic. If you if the community gives permission for us to use them in that way, we would love to include them. Yes, um, I specifically told them, we took pictures, which I will upload during my own presentation. I told them, look, what we are doing now will be on the internet. They were so happy. They were <laughs> so happy because I told them the world deserves to know what this, they, yes. what they, and they were so happy, uh -huh, you know. So oh, that's, um, you know, and you can understand if you have been maybe suffering somewhere and somebody said, let people actually know what is happening. Uh -huh. So, um, but, so I have tried to also let them be positive about what we are doing. Yes. And I, was, I also told them that the oil companies may not even know some of these stories. For example, they may be coming there to be engaging your people, some people not knowing that you people, they are not actually representing you in the way you would have wanted. Imagine if some elites, as they volunteered, could leave the community and engage the, the oil industrialists outside that community in their name. Okay, some of the oil communities might not uh, know these things the way it should have been known. So I assure them that our effort might, you know, uh, increase the knowledge uh, of all who would want to know about what is happening in energy production in their area. Fantastic. Thank you. That um, I'm so excited to see the to see the footage. Um, so the fourth question, um, what does success look like for this project? And and how will the project continue? Okay, fine. Um success for this project uh, as a researcher and someone who has devoted his time on this. Uh, we are talking of a community that is about a day journey from here, about 12 hours from this Abuja where I'm living. So I had to go by air to achieve the data, to carry out the research. I, I, I have to recruit a researcher from a nearby university who can speak the dialect. Okay. I am Igbo and I'm interviewing Igbo, but the dialects differ. Okay. So it's, I can hardly get some of the things they would say, but I could hear, but not understand. So I had to get somebody who is a part of that community and is working out. So the first thing with which I will measure this research is if it gives a voice to this community. I will be happy when, if one day there is a discussion of, on oil or energy issues, in a big authoritative forum in the world and people are mentioning our findings okay i will be so satisfied that i have used my uh, training skill as a researcher to push out data information that is very very positive uh, like i said there are things people may be doing because they don't know so assuming we may give them the chance to know then i think we have done a bit so visibility is, is very important to me for the community. Uh, well, for myself too. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i able to make the community visible, then maybe they may say, who made the community visible? Who made it possible for people to know that there are oil producing area of Igbo land that are not even known or their problems are not known? Um, added to that is how my research can lead to more researches. Can my research lead to more researches? I'll be very happy on that. Okay. Can my research motivate more researches? Um, then what of the advocacy impact? Advocacy impact. I was in Germany uh, two months ago and uh, they were celebrating uh, environmental uh, issues. And they invited me. Okay, so I was a part of the conversation 
with the students and the lecturers. And they knew very much about Niger Delta. So they could mention names, okay? People have been promoting uh, voices of Niger Delta. So I said, oh, this is good. I reminded them, well, there are oil producing areas beyond Niger Delta. Okay, so I think my research might also be something like that. So more advocacy, um, energy activists, environmental justice activists should find our efforts very resourceful in speaking out and helping. Oh, we've frozen again. People of this community where I have carried out this. Oh. My research to improve communal ethics of the boys. Because I was discovering that the oil was trying to create another form of community. Okay? That is the community of elites that are alienating their own people. And they are not finding the justification to make the oil industrialists to be part of the community in a very reliable manner. And I'm just giving you an instance that if I am in a community, I should be able to be a part of that community in a very positive manner. I asked them, do members of this oil industrialist, do any of them live here? They say they don't live here. They come, they do whatever they're doing, they go away. <laughs> okay which is not the best in my own thinking. Because if they were living there or have one or two serious interaction, okay, things that connect them, certainly they will find more interest in securing, uh, but they are, I mean, a whole lot of things. One of the things they complained was that they don't have any hospital around. They don't have healthcare system around. So assuming that our research, we are to, generate that type of understanding that those who produce oil in a community should also be part of the community, okay? One will expect that some of these things will be taken care of because uh, they are, their lives are also involved in whatever is happening, okay? And uh, that means that to make them happy, secure, and involved, and collaborative in what is happening, then the oil industry, oil, oil capitalists, or oil industrialists should also find enough reason to be a part of them. So I also expect my research to lead to that kind of thinking. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. I, yeah, I think um, I, I really hope that this happens and I hope that these um, experiences are shared on a much wider scale and people become more aware of what's happening. Um, I think, so we only have eight minutes left and then just to let you know, um, the Zoom call will end because I don't have a professional <laughs> a Zoom license. So yeah. it's, it's just the free version, <laughs> so it will cut out. Um, so I don't want to, yeah, you think I'm being rude, but it, it will cut out in eight minutes. Um, but I, I think you've answered all of the questions and you've done such a wonderful job. So. What I'll do is after this call, I'll um, I'll send you the transcript and the recording so that you have a copy of that. And I'll send it to Bethany as well so that she can see what we spoke about. And I think she'll say that we should organize a, a, another interview in a few weeks time um, so that she can be involved as well. And we'll just ask you probably the same questions again and, um, and maybe give you any feedback on 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 sort of if you if we want you to change your answers slightly to focus on you know other things but actually i think everything you spoke about was was brilliant and really shared the importance of the project as well as the methods of the project and the aims and the the importance of what you're doing so you know from my perspective i think i think that this is this is fantastic um and the in terms of next steps we have um we're going to ask for you to send us any materials by the end of march so that would include photographs um videos 
um, and and any audio as well, if you want us to include any particular sound. Um, and I'll, I will email this to you as well, so you have a note of it. Um, and also, do you do you think that you will want to interview someone from the community for the for the video, or will you just use the interviews that you already have recorded? Yeah. Oh, um, will you will you be able to do a, an interview with some community members for us to include, or will you send us the footage that you already have? Yeah, I think we have some. I have, have something rich enough. Yes. Yeah, okay. I can I can improve on that. Okay. Uh, I spent a lot of. I've done. I mean, I think uh, especially the two sub communities I've met. I have good data that I can improve on that if you want. Well, I mean, I haven't and seen. I, I, I wanted... haven't seen it. So if it, maybe you could send us what you have, and we can have a look at it. But um, there's there's no rush for that. We have another month or so, so you don't need to send that straight away. We'll, I'll send you some instructions. Um, do you have any questions for me? Uh, yeah. Um. When am I doing my presentation? Ah, yes, your presentation, <laughs> of course. We need to find a date. So I'm sorry that it's been so difficult to organize. Um, we Because you couldn't do the April date, um, we changed it around. So two other groups are presenting on that date. So now we need to find a date for you in um, either May or June. So could you maybe let me know um, if there are any dates in May or June that you can't do and I'll try and organize something. Does that sound okay? Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, uh, like I said, that's the date you choose fall within my inaugural which i've yes. been working yeah, on yeah of course of uh, course my inaugural lecture that's exciting yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i think um, i'm sure those who might want to join me will join me online yes uh, because as i used to say here i think i have more academic friends than non-academic friends so <laughs> um, inaugural is actually a social huge social event yes uh, yeah. but i'm not been good in socializing here i'm more of a conference person uh, touching, making friends across the world. So I'll send yeah. the IV for Zoom, and maybe I expect that. Right, yeah, well, so if you send it the to community, those who want to yeah. listen to you. If you send it to me, then I'll send it okay, to I'll the group. That, yes. Yeah, please do. That would be great. Okay, okay I'm going to stop the okay. recording now. Okay, that's right.